Tokyo Rose. Uh, I, and you know what, I watched this a few days ago, um, and so immediately I realized that I should have memorized her n proper name. It was something Taguchi, I think. Um, but she, the, the, I've heard the story of her a couple of times. Of course, um, everyone, uh, kind of a, a notorious sort of a name, the, the voice of the Japanese sort of propaganda that taunted GIs during World War II in the Pacific Theater and uh, was arrested and tried and convicted for treason after the war. Um, there was an actual um, Mark Felton's War Stories. It's a YouTube channel which tells various stories relating mainly to World War II, but he's very good at storytelling about those sorts of things. And he actually did a great video talking about the story of um, the the of Tokyo Rose and um, how she was really actually she was actually eventually given a pardon, um, and how she was actually somewhat of a victim uh, after the war, the way that she was treated. Um, I never actually appreciate a lot of details of this. It's a, it's a great video to watch, World War II traitor or victim. So I didn't realize a lot of the facts of this. So she was a Nikkei American. She was an American second generation who was traveling to visit relatives in Japan when the war broke out. And she was traveling on a ID. To, apparently in these days you could travel, you could leave the country and get into Japan on a personal ID document without having a proper passport. However, when the war broke out and she wanted to go back to America, she went to the embassy and asked for a U.S. passport, but the uh, U.S. government had stopped issuing passports to all Nikkei people. So um, she was stranded in Japan and she was promptly rounded up by the Kempeitai, by the, the Gestapo, the Japanese Gestapo, the secret police, um, and was detained along with other POWs and um, apparently the 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 campaigner I thought that they could put her to use um, with some other POWs to set up a sort of a propaganda radio station the the the, the propaganda stuff so apparently there were three people um, there was actually an Australian POW I forget the name of the guy but there was a, a, a and another POW who both would write and prepare the the, the sort of propaganda content and they had um, this lady basically read the, the the radio shows and it's funny because it was a little bit of a Hogan's Heroes Alo Alo situation where they were um, they understood that you know they were uh, they would face sort of punishment there that they needed to sort of you know figure out some way to go along with the, the Gestapo forcing them to do these radio broadcasts but trying to do it in a way that they wouldn't actually you know um, actually do something traitorous so for example um, they would sort of say to the Japanese that oh they they're really sticking it to them today and they you know they're really sort of torturing them but they were just basically playing jazz stuff and, and basically saying nothing very innocuous at all and apparently because of this although geos would never you know were, were reluctant to admit that they were listening to Tokyo Rose uh, there was quite good music and people actually quite enjoyed there was a good humor there were jokes um, there was you know so basically they figured out this way to to fill up all the content to play music and it was actually popular with the GIs and they played this through through the whole war. And to do it in a way where, where they weren't um, taunting, they weren't, um, you know, being sort of mean, they weren't putting out false information, but they were telling the Japanese and convincing the Japanese that they were just enough so that they could sort of, sort of dance between the raindrops and get through the whole thing. Which they did, and after the war, they identified the people who were associated with Tokyo Rose, including the Australian producer who wrote the content, and who was tried in Australia, he was detained in Australia, and investigated and tried, and he was acquitted because he was actually able to prove he never actually gave, um, you know, like false information or strategic information sort of relating to the war, or, you know, or, or anything that was sort of counter to his uh, duties or whatever. He had actually managed to prepare the content of the show in a way. Uh, thank you, Major Cousins. Uh, oh, thank you, Eva Toguri. Thank you, uh, Sergeant Buko. Uh, thank you for filling in the gaps. So after all this, they actually then went and arrested Eva. And um, she, all that she did was read the scripts that were prepared by Major Cousins, by the Australian. Um, and he had been acquitted and he had produced the whole show. And all she had done was read it. Um, and But apparently she was tried in San Francisco uh, and it was obviously uh, post-war and the, the government sort of wanted to make an example um, out of her. And so although they had a bunch of treason charges against her, they ended up having just one uh, charge which they actually convicted her of, um, which was giving out specific information about a, a, a sea battle that had apparently happened. But there was no evidence, there was no scripts or transcripts or recordings uh, to, to confirm that she had actually done what they said that they sh she did but based on that she was convicted on tr of treason in prison for 10 years and it took like 30 or 40 years for her to be sort of um I, in fact i think it was actually it was a, a nixon pardon or it might have uh, it might have even been a carter pardon but it was decades later fascinating story 
um, and actually quite sympathetic to again um, how um, and you consider the fact that you know um, the way that Japanese had been treated, Japanese Americans had been treated, uh, and how she had been in a very difficult situation that she had arguably, you know, actually negotiated very, very well. But there was just such an anti-Japanese sort of sentiment left in America that she was, uh, ironically, the victim when the person who wrote all the content that she read actually was acquitted. So, fascinating story, really, really worth watching. I think I just told you pretty much the whole story, but yeah, actually, it's told much better, and it's a fascinating thing, worth looking up. Uh, Tokyo Rose, World War II, Victor or Victim.